we're going to talk about radians and the unit circle. This is something that really causes people problems. Uh, but this one here is in Mark Wahlberg. When you think irrational, it looks like it's a pie. We're going to be talking a lot about pie. <laughs> this, this makes me so happy. All right, let's look at angles in degrees. Just to remind you how we do angles, because I'm going to try to attach or sort of anchor what we're going to do with radians with what you probably already understand somewhat at least in degrees. So let's first of all think about angles and degrees. We have a few rules here in this game. Where we were doing uh, bearings, we had zero start off straight north, like at, uh, at the top here, but here we're going to be um, overlaying this circle on top of an x and y axis. So because of that, we're going to consider uh, angles, they all start at the x-axis and they all go counterclockwise. That's going to be the first of these really important rules here, okay? So always, always, always do this. Now let's think about angles and degrees here. So angles and degrees, if we go straight to the right here, we're at 0 degrees, or if we go all the way around, we're at 360 degrees, okay? Hopefully that makes some sense. Now we're always going to be going around this way, okay? That's the direction that we go around, okay? Just like this. That's how we go around our angles. So we go zero degrees. So then what is straight up? Well, hopefully you'll see that's 90 degrees. So we'll, so we'll call that 90 degrees here. And if we go over here, well, 90 plus 90 gives you 180 degrees. So if it finishes here, it's at 180. And if it goes straight down, we do another 90 added to 180. It gives me 270 degrees. And you can do anything else in the middle, right? You can go halfway between 0 and 90. Halfway is, for example, uh, 45 degrees, and so on. Right? You can keep going whatever angles you want. So what's really going to be important later on is going to be where the angle finishes. So for example, let's just say um, I have a situation like this. Or maybe I'll do two different ones. Maybe I have an angle that goes like all the way over there. Or maybe I have an angle that goes maybe down to here. And I'll just show you like where it finishes. So I'll try to make a straight line. So let's say my angle goes across and finishes, and maybe it finishes up here in that quadrant. Whereas maybe another one, maybe I go around, you know, and it finishes somewhere like down here like this. So what's going to be important is where it finishes. That's going to tell us a lot. Okay, so that'll be with our x, y coordinate system here. Now we're going to see things in where we're going to radians. But otherwise, we're going to still count the same ways. And by the way, just in case you needed to know, uh, negative angles just go in the opposite direction. So like, let's say I did something like, um, I don't know, let's say, example, let's say I said uh, negative 90 degrees. Well, instead of going clockwise, going straight up, it's actually going to be counterclockwise. So it's going to go down. So that means it'll be something like... Uh, It'll look like this. It'll go down like that. And so then this will finish, so to speak. The important part is where it finishes. It'll finish straight down, so something like that. Okay, so that'll be my 90 degrees. So that's if I went negative, of course. If I did positive 90, it would go up. All right, so let's see how we can use this and what this is going to do for us. So if we have a unit circle, remember we're overlaying this on top of an x, y axis. Well, it helps to know what the units are. Like, is it like this, for example? Like, where is it? Well, we call it a unit circle for a reason, a unit of 1. So radius equals 1 unit. This is actually why we call it a unit circle. Okay, this is the key thing here. We're going to call it a unit circle because the radius will be 1. That means this value right here will be 1. x will be 1. And up here, y will be exactly 1. And over here, x will be exactly negative 1. And y will be exactly negative 1. Here. This will be the important thing here. Now, do you remember the equation for the circumference of a circle? Circumference of a circle is just 2 times pi times r, where this is our radius. Right? Remember, our radius is 1, right? So this is the key thing right here, is, is if, if I make r1, this is going to be the key here, okay? So if r equals 1, then what's the new circumference? And the circumference of a circle is just 2 times pi times 1. So this is going to be the key idea here, is that the circumference, you know, when you go all the way around, remember like if you sort of walk, so to speak, all the way around a circle, you've gone, well, 2 pi r, distance. But if r is only 1, you've walked around 2 pi. This is actually the reason why we call this radians. All the way around a circle, 
okay, is going to be a distance because that's your circumference, it's going to be just 2 times pi times 1. So that means your circumference is just 2 pi. And this is why we call these things radians, okay? It's because this is all related to what fraction of this right here have you done? So the, the key to all this is just knowing this fact right here, that walking all the way around a circle of radius 1 gives you a distance of 2 pi radians. So again, and that means that if I overlay this right here, remember this is a 1, this is a 1, this is a negative 1, and this is a negative 1. I know that if I go around, so this time we won't do it in degrees, we're going to use this weird thing called radians. So watch carefully. This is 0 radians, or, because remember this thing goes all the way around like this, remember we still go around this way, all the way around, it's also equal to 2 pi, because all the way around a circle of radius 1 is 2 pi. So we call this 2 pi radians. There's like a distance we travel. Well, if this all the way around is 2 pi, then what's half of it? Well, it must be 2 pi over 2, which is just equal to pi. So you notice that's why going around this one is just pi radians. So it's a bit weird because we don't define the angle as an actual angle swept out. We define it in some weird sense as the distance you've actually traveled. That's, that's one way of seeing it at least. So we define our angles in radians. Do you notice then, um, this is why maybe this right here, you might think it's funny. Uh, my brother sent me this one right here. This is actually taken in Canada. Look, I would like to have one pi, please. And you think, no, no, this is half a pi. Ah, but if you think in radians, look, one pi is actually half of a circle. Look, isn't that why it's funny? <laughs> so if you go around by pi, you've actually gone around by half a circle. <laughs> so this is actually one pi radians. Now, for short, for radians instead, sometimes we actually just say pi rad, which is actually kind of funny. It sounds like some sort of 80s exclamation, like totally radical dude or something. But uh, this right here is the key here. It's going to be knowing these facts. At 360 degrees all the way around, that is 2 pi radians. And therefore, halfway across, so 180 degrees, that is pi radians. In fact, this is the one that I use the most often. This one right here. This is the one that I use all the time. This, I could not stress the importance enough. This video is maybe one of the most important ones. I do this whole topic just to explain a bunch of the key root things that we're going to need to know. So 180 degrees is pi radians. We're going to use this. I mean, we could use this one, but just this is the simplified version. So 180 degrees is pi radians. And believe it or not, that's the only thing I have in my own head. When I'm dealing with radians, I just think of this one fact. Zero is over here. Pi is to the left. I figure everything else out just from this. So let's see if we can use this. So if we want to convert from radians to degrees or degrees to radians, let's see if we can. So we'll have this first question right here where it says, uh, all right, well, let's convert 90 degrees to radians. I mean, you could have just looked at the drawing and kind of guessed it, but let me, let me show you instead how to do it. Let me show you with the equation first. So if we use this equation, uh, we could say this one fact. And a, a nice trick I like to do is always look at what I'm looking for. In this case right here, I want, I'll call it x. And I want it in radians, so I'm going to make a fraction. I'm going to say x radians over something degrees. Okay, so x radians over 90 degrees has to be the same thing as some other fraction that I know that has the same dimensions. So I have to have something in rad and something in degrees. And what do I know? I know that pi radians is 180 degrees. So I always say pi over 180. Do you see if this makes the units sort of work out? If I do this, let's see, I want to get x by itself, so x is going to be, let's see, my 90 degrees comes on top, so it's going to be 90 pi over 180. And what's this? They both divide by uh, 90, in fact. 90 divided by 90 is 1, and 180 divided by 90 is 2. So I have pi over 2. Therefore, I have my answer is pi over 2 radians. This is what I get. Now, if you weren't sure, another way to look at it is just to look at this graph and say, well, 90 degrees is, ha is straight up, isn't it? And if I know that all the way to the left is pi, well, half of it must be pi over 2. So see how hopefully this stuff will all make sense once you've practiced it a lot. This one, let's take a look at this. So now we've got uh, pi, uh, 3 pi over 4 radians. We want it to degrees. So this time I'm going to say, maybe I'll say like x in degrees 
over something in radians. So I know that's uh, 3 pi over 4 rad. Well, it has to be equal to some fraction that I know that goes degrees over rad. But I do know something. I know that 180 degrees is pi radians. See, I'm just using it opposite. Instead of saying pi over 180, I'm saying 180 over pi. The reason this works is now I can get x by itself. Right? So I can say, all right, well then, I'm going to convert here. I'm going to say that means that x equals, let's see, it must be 3 pi over 4 has to come up to the top here. So that means I'm going to have, um, let's see, I'm going to have, yeah, I mean, I guess I could see it as, uh, yeah, the 3 pi will come up top. So I'll say it's 3 pi times 180, all that over 4, and there was still a pi. See, because it's 3 pi over 4, that was the initial part, and there's still a 180 over pi. Good news, the pi's cancel out, which is good, they should. Um, I could think about 180 divided by 4. What's that? Well, it's uh, 180 divided by 2 is 90. Half of that is 45. So 45 times 3, let's see, that'll be 90. That'll be 135, I think. Yeah, there we go. So this here is how we can, we can at least start to think about these angles here. So this is just, yeah, starting to think about conversions. By far, the most important thing I'm going to show you is these two right here. These two right here, okay? These are going to be the most important things. I could not stress this enough. This is the part now really, really, really pay attention. Because a lot of the things I'm going to do later on are going to be by starting with this. This is going to be step one in so many of the questions we're going to solve later on. Okay, this is going to be the key, is thinking about what are multiples of 90 and 45 degrees. But we're going to do these in radians. And I would say don't memorize these drawings. I think a lot of students try, don't do that. Just know that 0 is over here and pi is over here. That's all you got to know. If I want multiples of 90 degrees, that means going like straight up. So watch carefully again. 90 degrees, which is up here, straight up, that must be half of this. So half of pi must be pi over 2. Does that make sense? If you finish up here, you're at pi over 2. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to count by multiples of pi over 2. Watch. 1 pi over 2. This must be 2 pi over 2. But good news, look, 2 pi over 2 reduces, doesn't it, to pi. Yay. That means the next one must be 3 pi over 2, which means the next one after that must be 4 pi over 2. But good news, that reduces to 2 pi, doesn't it? That's why it's also equal to 2 pi. I don't know if that made any sense, but this is just to try to show you how everything here is consistent. So I've just done all the multiples of 90 degrees, because 90 degrees is pi over 2. Let's now do half of that. So I take my pi over 2 and I split it in half. That gives me 45 degrees, doesn't it? Now 45 degrees must be then pi over 4, because half of pi over 2. See, pi over 2 divided by 2, 2 times 2 is 4. So this is 1 pi over 4. Now I'm going to start counting by pi over 4. So watch carefully. 1 pi over 4. This must be 2 pi over 4. You might wonder, oh, but what happens? Don't worry, look, it reduces to pi over 2. Yay. This then must be 3 pi over 4. If that's 3 pi over 4, this must be 4 pi over 4. But what does that give me? 4 pi over 4. Hey, it reduces still to pi. Hooray. So we got 1, 2, 3 pi over 4, 4 pi over 4. This must be 5 pi over 4. This will be 6 pi over 4, but that will reduce. This over here then must be 7 pi over 4. So this is the key to doing this right here, is recognizing these angles right here. This is so important that you can do this. So this takes practice. So I would say just practice, practice, practice. But these are the quote-unquote easier ones because they're straight up or half of that. Now comes the slightly harder but not so impossible. We're still going to do these. So I'm still going to do 0 here, which is still 2 pi. This over here is still pi, except this time I'm going to take my pi, instead of splitting it by 2, I'm going to split it into 3. So watch carefully, I'm going to go kind of like this and like this. I didn't do it perfectly, but something like that. So I'm going to take it into 3 pieces, so that's pi over 3. Well, that must be, let's see, 180 degrees divided by 3 is 60 degrees, so this is pi over 3. It would help to kind of know that these numbers here. This, by the way, is half of that. So that must be pi over 6, because that's half of 60. Let's just start counting in pi over 3s here. So 0, 
1 pi over 3. This must be 2 pi over 3. The next one then must be 3 pi over 3. But good news, it reduces again. Yay. Then down here must be 4 pi over 3. And over here then must be 5 pi over 3. And you might think, well, what's that one over there? Well, that's 6 pi over 3. What was that reduced to? 2 pi, hooray. So it still works. So now I've done my 60 degrees. Let's do half of that. Maybe I'll do this one in a different color just to show you. So I'll do half of pi over 3, because that's if this was 60 degrees, well then half of that must be 30 degrees. So let me start doing my 30 degrees ones. This is pi over 6, which is 30 degrees. Let's start counting in pi over 6s. 1 pi over 6, 2 pi over 6, Let's see, does that work? 2 pi over 6. Good news, 2 pi over 6 reduces to pi over 3. Yay. So this is 1 pi over 6, 2 pi over 6. This must be 3 pi over 6. But remember what that reduces to? Pi over 2. It still works, straight up. So this must be 4 pi over 6. This must then be 5 pi over 6. That's one of the weird, whoops, I made it look like a curve here. Must be 5 pi over 6. Then we've got 6 pi over 6, but that'll reduce again. See, 6 pi over 6 will still reduce. This must then be 7 pi over 6 right here. This must be 8 pi over 6, but that'll reduce. This must be 9 pi over 6 straight down here. But 9 pi over 6 will be 3 pi over 2. So that still works. I see there's actually not many of them we actually need. Uh, I just made that look really ugly. Let me just make it a little bit prettier here. So 9 pi over 6 equals 3 pi over 2. This must be 10 pi over 6. It also reduces. So this here must then be 11 pi over 6. And of course, this last one then will be 12 pi over 6. But 12 pi over 6 will reduce again to 2 pi. So you see, I hope you'll see that these are all supposed to work out. They're all supposed to give you these different numbers here. So we have this straight up one, which we had from before, right? That was pi over 2. We had this straight up one right here, straight down, I mean, was 3 pi over 2. So all that happened is just knowing these ones, it just helps to start off with do 60 degrees, which is pi over 3, and just start counting by units of pi over 3s. Then put that in half, start counting by units of that. You'll notice a lot of them cancel out, not cancel out, but reduce. The only weird ones that still sort of have pi over 6s are this. Otherwise, I think if you try to look at this and try to memorize it, wouldn't this look really complicated? Look, pi over 6, pi over 3, pi over 2, 2 pi over, what? That's why I think if you just, just do it in order like I showed you, just don't memorize things. Just the only thing that I have in my head is this. That's the only fact that I know is 180 is pi. That's it. The rest of it, I just figure them out by drawing. So now you might wonder, like, when will I use this? Well, all over math, that's for sure, like everywhere on every question. We use it in physics, for example, circular motion, for example. But, but there's lots of places where we find it. But really, the key, key, key thing here is knowing how to do these drawings here and knowing that this fact here, that 180 is pi radians, that's because we go around a unit circle of radius 1. And the distance traveled across, then, is just 2 pi. That's what we do.